Great news. There's a quick way you can save money. Switch to GEICO. GEICO could help you get great coverage at a great price. And it only takes 15 minutes to see if you could save 15% or more on car insurance. Go to GEICO.com today and see how much you could save. Oh, getting you ready for the weekend and hope your Friday morning's off to a great start. Glad you're with us on Golich and Wingo on ESPN Radio and ESPN <laughs> News. Presented by Progressive Insurance. All phone guests join us on the Shell Penzo Performance Line. So, Mike, now that we know that, that, that you've said this before and now you're part of Croatia. <laughs> yes. Are you, are we going full Golich now or are we going to stick with Golich? Again, my name, uh, the origin of my name had an H at the end of it. It was Golich. Uh, I have no idea when we dropped the H, but, uh, and I have, no intent intention of going back to the H uh, at all. It is Golich. I kind of like it though. Um, it sounds Golich. Golich. It sounds it's... like you just shot. Well, it sounds like something you would say after you down like five shots. Yeah, Golich. Bring me another Golich. Golich. Uh, no, I am rooting for France because then I and will the win Cup? our World Cup. or will win our my, our, our fantasy draft. So uh, now I, I'm going against Mike and Devin, who have Croatia, and they will win if Croatia wins. Though. Uh, we have changed the scoring a bit. We can end in a tie. If we end in a tie, Mike and Devin will do uh, penalty kicks against me, and I will do them against them. So that that I, I, I bet I'm almost wishing for a tie because I want to out athlete these youngsters. Well, That's what I want to hold do. Hold on a minute now. Yeah, uh, Bubble Boy Devin, who of course didn't know where his favorite baseball player actually played on the field, uh-huh. uh, thinks this is going to be an easy win for you guys in PKs. I mean, top corner, bottom shelf. Where do you want it? Dude, Bubble no, boy. you know where? Bubble Boy the, calling his shot. Neither one of those places is anywhere where you can put it. Let me just put it that way. I know right. when you kick, I just have to stand still in the middle. That because could be a strategy you too. Though. Because you won't, even make, you won't even get it in the net. So All that's right. how confident I, I am. Boy. I want to tie now. Do you know how, you know how embarrassing, Trey, as a fellow 55-year-old, yeah. would it be? Hold on. I'm not 55 yet. You're 56? I know. The other way. Okay, 54. We'll get there shortly. Devin, how old are you? 17. 27. You're 27. Mike, Mike is 28. I am 55. And if this thing ties, if we tie, we are going to do penalty kicks out in the, we find some open area and, and, and to a regulation goal. Yeah. I am going to beat them. How embarrassed will they be for the rest of their lives? By the way, I love for the, the rest of their lives when I beat them. I love the fact that their ages combined is your age. Yes. <laughs> That's the best I mean, part. Devin, in all honesty, if I were to beat the two of you, how embarrassed could you even show up at work? It'd be pretty bad, honestly. <laughs> and That's how I, much I think we're going to win. And I will say, I will rub it in so badly every single day on you. Oh, same, same. It will be embarrassed. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm almost in a no lose situation, right? Fair, yeah. Two young guys beat an old man at soccer. Great. It's supposed to be. It's supposed to happen. I beat you. Oh my God. I am the man and you guys are squat. You got, you got a long wingspan. It wouldn't be. It's not gonna be easy. Oh, but, don't start oh, doing that! Listen, listen, oh wait, no, no. Wait, let, let's begin. That this is how petty the show is. Yes, right? yes. The conversation started. Top shelf, lower corner. Where oh, do you yeah. want it, big boy? Oh. Well, you got a big wingspan. This oh. is gonna be easy. I'm glad Man, you caught that, Trey. Stick Thank you. something and stay with it, Bubble Boy. I'm gonna tell you, I'm going bottom left. Yeah. And I'm still gonna go bottom left. <laughs> Oh my God! You... Actually, that would make sense because I think diving high is going to be easier than him bending. No, over. no, no. Here's the thing, I Trey. With him saying problem. he's going bottom left, that's like me saying I'm knocking this drive straight down the middle of the fairway. My intent is that if you say you're going bottom left, you're going top right shelf. Who and not even intending to? Who are you kidding? Th- this has to happen. Now. Oh, I know. So, so again, for this to end in a tie. Uh, you have to win. Belgium has to win on t- tomorrow, and in Croatia the, has to win against. And then France. Croatia. So if Bel- I'm five ahead now, the third and fourth place game is worth two points. Mm-hmm. So if Belgium wins, I'm up seven uh, on these guys, and, and, and the, the title game worth is seven. worth seven points. So if Croatia beats France, they get seven, and we tie. Okay, so, so that's what go. that's what we're all hoping uh-huh. for at this point. Although, allez les bleus, vive la France! All right, let's get ready with what's trending, and over the weekend. Saturday night, Manny Pacquiao Mike is going to step into a boxing ring for the 69th time as a pro, where he faces hard-hitting Lucas Matisse in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Kuala Lumpur is one of the great words you can say of all time. This, so this is a 40-year-old. He's going to turn 40 as Pacquiao uh, in December. Matisse is 35 years old, 
39 wins for Matisse. 36 of them have come by knockout. He's more of the puncher in this. We'll have um, uh, Teddy Atlas in studio a little bit later uh, to talk about this. But Pacquiao's out there fighting, man. I mean, he's going to be 40 years old. He's one of those guys you wonder just how long he is going to go. He's the betting favorite right now at minus 210, meaning you have to bet $210 to win 100 bucks. So he's the betting favorite right now and there are I, I'm reading through a list of of analysts who think he has a really good shot to win this one we'll think we'll hear what Teddy Atlas has to say a little later yeah Teddy will join us in the next hour of the show again you can watch the fight on ESPN plus starting at nine Eastern well it's down to the big boys and the big ladies at Wimbledon and congratulations to Serena Williams she swept aside Julia Gorgas in straight sets Thursday Gurgis excuse me uh, to book her place in the 2018 Wimbledon final 23 times a Grand Slam winner won the semi 6-2-6-4 in just 70 minutes to reach her 10th Wimbledon singles final amazing what she's doing well I mean again 10 months from giving birth to her first child as I or as your son said completing her pregnancy completing her, I mean he, he really struggled <laughs> with that uh, I'll say again, there have been three women who have won the Grand Slam events after give, giving birth. Margaret Court and Kim Kleister have won three, and Yvonne Gulagan, I believe, has won two. I think I have those numbers right. But the three people have won multiple since giving birth. She's about to win her first one. I, I do not see Kerber stopping her in this one, but though you say Kerber is going to be a very good opponent yeah. for her, I, I, I don't think many people are going to be putting money on Kerber, except for maybe the Kerber family. Correct. Um, and here's the thing is you only at 10 months from, from, uh, uh, childbirth, you got to think she's just going to be getting stronger, getting back in better shape and getting stronger. Uh, and, and where she can go with this thing, it's just ridiculous with her. With, with Serena, it's very similar to what Roger Federer said after his loss to Kevin Anderson in the quarters, where basically said, I was off and that allowed Kevin Anderson to win. And while that sounds petty and welcome to the show, Raj, uh, he's right. And if Angelique Kerber wins, it'll be because Serena Williams is I, look, I, I think we're going to get to the point, if she goes on another run yeah. and wins another handful of Grand Slams, that at the end of her career, we're going to say, and forgetting men and women, greatest athletes of all time, that she may be on the Mount Rushmore of that. I, I think she's almost I mean, she's got to be almost right there right now. Um, it's, it's incredible. It, yeah, it, when, when Serena is right, uh, no one else really has a chance. And that's at an advanced age for her, right? Uh, coming yep. off childbirth and where she had major complications uh, with her first baby girl. So good for her all oh, the way around. Yeah. Look, all the luck in the world to Angelique Kerber. And if she wins, congratulations. Yeah, yeah. But if both are at their best, Serena's winning that match. It's just that simple. Meanwhile, the gentlemen's semifinals are about to get underway on ESPN. They feature four players 30 or older making this the first time in men's or women's majors in the open air with four semifinalists in their 30s, including John Isner at 33, who is finally in his first slam semifinal, his big serve game going up against Kevin Anderson, who took down Roger Federer, it the is, defending champ. It is amazing, with Isner being 6'10 and Anderson being 6'8, it will be the tallest major matchup in the semifinals or later in the open air. This is era. a summer league game, Mike. Not not shocking at all. Uh, Isner holds an 8-3 advantage uh, over Anderson. Here's the interesting note, though. This is uh, th- They both played in college. As a matter of fact, they played for the NCAA uh, National Championship title match in 2007. Isner won that match, leading his uh, Bulldogs from Georgia. Anderson went to Illinois. The Bulldogs to a national title in 32-0. They're the first former men's college players to advance to the semis in Wimbledon since Todd Martin from Northwestern and uh, Malavi Washington from, from Michigan did it in 1996. And this is the note of the day that you can go ahead and make some money on. Yep. The last former men's college player to win a major title. You have to go back to 1984, the U.S. Open champ from Stanford, the man calling these matches, right. John McEnroe. I, I I had no idea about that. That is yeah. a, a, amazing to me. And honestly, the amazing thing about that is too, because that was still in an era where people started very young and went out and played tennis. Yeah. So the fact that John actually went to college, I think he only went one or two years, but still, the right, fact that he right. was there uh, is an amazing thing because that's when this that was when this whole era of like, look, just go play, get out there and be a pro as soon as you can, sort of took off. So we'll see what happens. The men's semis between Isner and Kevin Anderson about to get underway, and you can see that match on ESPN. Okay, uh, that now out of the way, it is time, ladies and gentlemen, to get into our summer bracketology of hot takes. Summer 
take bracket. It's so damn hot. Again, it's an NCAA style bracket of the hottest takes all time in sports. And then we'll go through them and we'll pair them off. The next round will really be the payoff of what we're talking about. But as we do through this hour of Golik and Wingo, brought to you by La Quinta Inns and Suites, book at LQ.com, we figured the best way to sort of deal with this about hot takes is someone who is never about hot takes, someone who is actually about spitting truth and factual information just to keep us grounded. <laughs> and that would be our fine ESPN analyst, Teddy Bruschi. Uh, Teddy joins us now on the Shell Penzoil Performance Hotline. Brew, how are we doing this morning? What's up, guys? How's it going? I, I don't know about keeping it grounded, but uh, the hot takes I thought was was you, Trey, trying to make that six minute mile. That was a good one there. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a farce. So, so I mean, <laughs> hopefully you weren't drinking coffee or eating because you had to spit it out of your mouth if you heard that, right, Teddy? I mean, you you had to know yeah. right away there was no way, correct? <laughs> yeah, that was that was a lot of laughs hearing that. You like, know, like uh, I said, he's keeping it straight. He's uh, keeping it grounded. Along those lines, for those that may not know, <laughs> what, what we were talking about is Damian Woody and I were talking about the test before the season start of what running and or lifting tests we had to do as football players. Like we did 315 on the bench for reps as D Lyman and in Philly, we had to run an 880 in Houston. It was a 12 and a half, 12 minutes and how far you could run. And it was Taylor Twelman who said they had to do a three miles in 18 minutes. So that's where Trey said he could do the one mile in six minutes. So Teddy, Teddy, I'm curious, your years in New England, what were your, te- if you had the test, what were your running and lifting tests? Yeah, well, the conditioning test was the main thing everyone would fear coming in because, I mean, there were guys where either with it was Parcells, Carroll, or mainly Belichick, too, if you didn't pass the conditioning test, you could get cut that very day. Yep. So, um, with, with early on, it was 300 yard shuttles, a uh, series of, uh, 25 yard down and backs, uh, so that'd be I don't know 12 something like that. Um, time two of those with a few minutes in between, and then it turned into sets of four. Um, let's see, for linemen it was 40 yard sprints for mid skill guys, which was linebacker tight end. 50 yard sprints uh, for skilled guys, 60 yards. You'd have to get that in um, you know five, six, or seven seconds. I think it was. Those are the times, respectively, in a certain amount of time. But it was it was it was about making the time every single time. So um, different tests, but all but but also very difficult because a lot of guys, especially the bigger running backs, having to make that. Like I remember Antoine Smith, the big running back that we had that we signed yeah. from Buffalo, having a tough time to make it. And then Ty Law and Lauren Malloy, literally running a, on on each side of him, pushing him past the finish line just so he made it because. Uh, <laughs> You didn't want that ridicule, ridicule if you didn't. How mentally daunting, though, would it be when you approach that test? So just knowing if you don't make it where you said you could get cut, other times you couldn't practice until you made it. it to, to me, while it was could be physically hard, it was more mentally daunting. Yeah, and I think, I think the guys that cut were those guys that were free agent guys that were getting a tryout and getting a chance in training camp. They had to show that they were ready to play. But I think the thing was, if you were so amped for it, Golic, and if you went out too fast, you never would finish on time. Yep. So it was really self control of I know I can run this fifty yard dash in about, you know, seven seconds, but the first few I could do it in five. So trying not to go go out and prove something and win the race in the first couple of sprints to just maintain and then make sure you get through with it. Okay, as Teddy Bruski is with us, the the reason we had Teddy on, we'll, we'll take Teddy anytime we can, let's be honest about that, but specifically for today, we're in our hot takes, and the hot take debate right now is Bill Belichick is the greatest current head coach, or Greg Popovich is the greatest current head coach. Obviously, Teddy, you played your entire, most of your career, because you were there with Bill Parcells who drafted you, you played most of your career under Bill Belichick. So just take us behind the curtain a little bit. In In, in your working with Bill, what was it about him that struck you, that made you believe that he might be one of the greatest coaches of all time? What were the things that he did that you were like, man, this guy knew how to push my buttons? Yeah, I think I think focusing just on the moment right there, like the training camp's coming up right now and focusing what you need to training camp because when he first came in, uh, our guys didn't see him as the greatest coach of all time. I mean, these guys come in now and they've got a poster of him on their wall since they were in high school or something like that, and they know that his track record's proven. So he was still young and trying to prove things for us when he first came in before we broke through. But for us, it was it was amazing that every single year, it was always the same in training camp. He had the same training camp goals and 
you know, being an analyst now for about 10 years, I always listen to him around training camp just to see if he's the same, if he's changed. And it's always he wants a smart, tough football team that's fundamentally sound, and he wants to eliminate bad football. And those are the exact same things that he said to us in my last training camp in 2009. I even revisited my notes last night and saw that that's what I wrote down and it's what he still talks about. And eliminating bad football, he would talk about the crusade he was on, how he wanted to stomp it out. And that bad football to him is really procedure penalties, um, you know, quarterback center exchange, those type of things. That's what he's going to do in training camp. And that's how we always kept it simple for guys because he always told told teams about not about what you've done in the past, how many games you won. You tell guys, I don't care if you were an all-pro. I don't care if you were a pro bowler last year. It depends on how you're going to be in practice tomorrow. These are our goals, and then focus on them. He made it really simple for guys in terms of we knew what he wanted, and if we were able to complete those tasks and complete his goals, we'd be a good football team. And then once that happened, you know, then you start believing it, and all of a sudden it turns into something. But I think the main thing he showed for us early on in his career at the New England Patriots was, you want to tell us that we, it doesn't matter who the franchise is, who the quarterback is, and what we did the year before, all pro or pro bowl or whatever. He actually did that in that second year of his. His first year we went to 2000, we went 5-11, and 11, I think it was. And then second year, well, the franchise, the all-pro, the pro bowler, Drew Bledsoe goes down, and a kid named Tom Brady comes in, and he kept him in as long as he was doing those things that he had been talking us to for the last two years. Right. So all of a sudden, okay, he means what he said, and it's working, and that's when it all started. Teddy Bruschi joining us, our ESPN NFL analyst, three-time Super Bowl champ, Patriots uh, Hall of Famer as well. And then, and there's another other side always because listen, I don't care how long you play, you don't love everything a coach does 100 percent of the time. There's still things you don't look forward to. So on that side of it, in camp with a Bill Belichick, what were some of the things that maybe you dreaded that was going to happen in camp, or dreaded that that he was going to do? Um, he was just going to point out the the areas you needed improvement upon, and you know, even me going into my 12th and. 13th years for him in training camps, if I took one le- one step incorrectly out there, it was something that he would harp on. Those those fundamentals that I mentioned that he was trying to coach in training camp, it was always the same. In meeting rooms in front of the entire team, no one was safe. I think you've heard this before. I mean, he's he's called out everyone from Brady to, to kickers and everything like that in terms of a fundamental is not correct. It doesn't matter it doesn't matter what you that you were able to do them in week 17 of last year. Can you do it again? And that constant pressure that he would put on a lot of players was always something that kept players on their toes and you know kept the pressure on for two, even in a training camp practice, to show that from one from one practice to another, not being an error repeater, which is a term that he used a lot was something that you didn't want to be. And isn't it, and I try and tell this all the time, whether it's in a game or in practice, when you do something wrong, you know you dread the film session later, don't you? <laughs> because you know it's coming up. Yeah, you know it's coming, or it's coming immediately if he's there and he sees it and he knows that. Because this is what he believes. Okay, I see the mistake. All right, that's okay to make a mistake. All right, so I'm going to go there, and I'm going to point it out to everybody. I'm going to show you how to fix the mistake. We're going to go over to the meeting room. We'll go over to the walkthrough, and then we're going out and practice. And then if you mess it up again, and then the whole, the whole team and the media knows it doesn't matter who's there, and then he'll recap to you about how you messed it up yesterday. We went over and walked through. We went, went through it in meetings. I talked to you about this at lunch, all of that, and you still messed it up. And that's when you really know you were going to get it. All right, as Teddy Bruschi is with us again for our summer take uh, bracketology, Bill Belichick, the greatest head coach currently, uh, Greg Popovich, the greatest head coach currently, I want you to listen to something that Mike Budenholzer, the Bucks head coach, said on the Adrian Wojnarowski podcast, the Woj Pod, about uh, his time with Greg Popovich. Let's just listen to this for a second. Pop doesn't, uh, uh, I guess I'll just say, he doesn't like people who have a lot to say or you know, speak too freely or too often, you know, that's one of the quickest ways to probably be shown the exit. And then if you don't have any personality, if you don't ever say anything, he's like, what's wrong with this guy? You know, (laughs) doesn't he care? Does he have any personality? Doesn't he have any thoughts or ideas? 
So you just sit there saying, I don't know if I'm supposed to talk or if I'm supposed to keep my mouth shut or what I'm supposed to do. And you just, you know, and he wants, he wants personality. He wants fresh ideas. And, um, he just makes you think about it a little bit before you speak. Does that sound at all in, in any way like Bill Belichick? Well, I was never in the coach's meeting, right. but I could always tell when my coach got tongue lashed in one of those meetings. Dean <laughs> 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 Pease or Matt Patricia or Manzini, uh, the D coordinator, or Pepper Johnson, when they when they come in and they're your linebacker coach and they come in and <laughs> they're going over something that you know that's so simple and it's so we've been over this a million times, guys. We're saying this as players to the coach, like, why are we going through this again? And then they tell us, well, hey, well, if I'm in the meeting and I get it from the head coach because you guys are out there messing up something that we went through, I got to tell it to you again. So it, whatever. You know what rolls downhill, guys. So this is what we got to do. So, yeah, cause I was always – you always knew when your coach got it in those TV meetings, and Bill was always famous for letting his – coaching his assistant coaches hard. That is so true. It is. So and, true. And all I could think of when I heard that is when players would walk through the facility, and Teddy has told this story, Bill would would come quiz him about something. Hey, what do you think about this? And you would better have an answer – Otherwise, or you better walk the other way yeah, real you, quick. You better sprint or say, sorry, I got a sore throat, coach. I can't talk. Uh, Brew, we appreciate the insight on what's going on between uh, and what makes Belichick so great. Again, the poll is out there. Who's What's a better take? Belichick, the greatest current coach. Popovich, the greatest current coach. Brew, we appreciate you being with us this morning, brother. Thank Thanks, you. Eddie. Anytime, guys. Have a great one. See you. Brew's the best. By the way, you feel like you know a guy. I worked with him for nine years. I'm never on social media. I'm never on social media. He's now everywhere. Yeah. He's posting on Instagram left and right, and he's even gotten on Twitter. He got the bug, huh? I don't even know who he is he anymore. He got the bug. Support for the Go Look and Wingo Show podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Let's talk about buying homes for a minute. Because of rising interest rates, there's a lot of unpredictability when it comes to buying a home these days. It's causing a whole lot of anxiety with folks. Well, our friends at Quicken Loans are doing something about it. They're calling it the power buying process, and here's how it works. Quicken Loans will verify your income, assets, and credit in less than 24 hours to give you a verified approval. This gives you the strength of a cash buy. Then once you're verified, you qualify for their all new exclusive rate shield approval. First, they lock your rate for up to 90 days while you shop. Now here's the best part. If rates go up, your rate stays the same. But if rates go down, your rate also drops. You win either way. It's the kind of thinking you'd expect from America's largest mortgage lender. To get started, go to rocketmortgage.com slash Golic. Rate shield approval only valid on certain 30-year purchase transactions. Additional conditions or exclusions may apply. Based on Quicken Loans data in comparison to public data record, equal housing lender, license in all 50 states, nmlsconsumeraccess.org number 3030. Hi, I'm Bryce Harper. Join me and the thousands tweeting and posting their appreciation for our military and veterans by using T-Mobile's hashtag Hats Off for Heroes. When you share your photo or video with hashtag Hats Off for Heroes, T-Mobile will donate $1 to support vets with Team Rubicon. So America, keep posting with hashtag Hats Off for Heroes and T-Mobile will keep giving. Major League Baseball trademarks used with permission. Official licensee of Major League Baseball Players Association. Golik and Wingo, presented by Progressive Insurance. All phone guests join us on the Shell Penzoil Performance Line. And we will be on the road next Monday, mm-hmm. or Monday, I guess, coming up, presented by Progressive Insurance for the Major League Baseball All-Star Game in Washington, D.C. And district our drivers, by the way, who switched to Progressive, can save an average of $620. So, Mike... Uh, you were out uh, having uh, you know unlicensed dentistry yes. yesterday. They yes, power tools in your mouth. That's a little bit fun. Yeah, a little painful. Yep, still a little painful. So we played a little sound yesterday from Rob Polinka, aka Fake Rob Lowe, mm-hmm. uh, the Lakers <laughs> gentleman. Look at him; he looks. <laughs> oh, like, I know. I it's unbelievable. I'm with you. I'm with you. Uh, basically, saying that this was the plan to build this team around LeBron that they had all along, uh, and this is what he said about how he and, as he referred to him, Irvin Johnson, mm-hmm. not Magic. Decided to build the team. Irvin and I had a conversation, and you know, LeBron echoed this sentiment that I think to try to play the Warriors in their own game is a trap. No one's going to beat them at their own game. And so that's why we wanted to add these elements of sort of defense and toughness and depth and try to look at areas where, um, where we'll have an advantage. So, well, there you go. Uh, listen, the, 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 the team that can beat them at their own game 
maybe could have done it last year had they not had an injury in Chris Paul. Yeah, and and missed 27 yeah. straight threes. In but, you know, that, listen, that's part of their game is Correct. they shoot three, so you, you take the chance of missing a lot of threes. So I even take that out of it. Chris Paul wasn't there for the last two games. Now, would that could that have made a difference? I absolutely could have, and that would have been a team to beat them at their own game. Houston played better defense last year than they had, and they certainly can shoot with Golden State. Here's what's going on, in my opinion, with the Lakers is they're just trying to, you know, you're trying to put lipstick and dress up a pig. Yep. All right. Is what you're trying to do. And you're doing it for a year. So you're trying to say anything because in to Palinka's defense, what were they going to acquire this offseason that could make them compete with Golden State? Nothing. What shooters were out there to say, OK, we're going to get these guys to beat Golden State at their own game? Nobody, right? Correct. You know, Paul George decided to go back to Oklahoma City. They can't get this trade for Kawhi uh, done, or that that's not happening. So right now, they couldn't get the pieces necessary to beat Golden State at their own game. So how do you couch it? Well, let's go this route. We got a bunch of tough-minded, defensive guys, playmakers, who are all, the one part you keep leaving out, all on one-year contracts. <laughs> This and um, n- none of them, or only some of them, will be back next year, including some of the young players. You'll take this year. You'll decide which young players are working well with LeBron, which of the one-year wonders that you brought in this year are going to be gone. You surround that with the monster free agency that is next year, monster free agency that is next year, and then you build that team. So he's basically. Again, trying to dress up a pig. Now, it's going to be a better pig this year in the Lakers. They've been irrelevant. I think they're going to make the playoffs. They're not the third best team in the conference, like people are saying. No shot, in my opinion, at that. Yeah, this is the plan for one year. Right, exactly. Say it it that way. You're you're making it sound like, yeah, this, this was our plan because the other plan of competing with Golden State and getting people to do that wasn't going to happen. The players weren't out there to get to say, okay, now we can outshoot Golden State. So then Jerry West, the logo, legendary Laker, uh, been with them forever, now a consultant with the Clippers, said this to Sports Illustrated about the idea of the Lakers landing to Braun. And again, it starts out with the words that are actually the counter meaning. <laughs> yeah. The quote starts, all due respect. And when you start with all due respect, you're giving no due that's respect. Ricky Bobby. That's, that's the way it goes. Mm-hmm. I love you, Ricky Bobby. All due respect to the Lakers, who handled everything well, but as these things go, LeBron was not a tough free agent signing. LeBron wanted to come to L.A., and he wanted to come to the Lakers, period. He has a family he's thinking about. He has a home here, actually, too. Mm -hmm. He has a son, whom we wanted to keep in one school in Los Angeles. He will be a celebrity out here, sure, but it's a place once in a while he can get lost, be himself. You can't do that everywhere. So basically, what Jerry West is saying is that, yeah, it's great that they got him, but it wasn't a stretch because there were a lot of reasons for LeBron to come to L.A. and be a part of the yeah, Lakers. You know, you, you could go one of two ways. You can say, hey, he's telling the truth. Or the other is, why, why you got to go down that road? You yeah. know, Jerry, you're, everybody knows how great you are and what you've done as a player and certainly as a general manager and as a consultant. And you are the logo. You know, is, is there a need for that? Yeah. I mean, I, I think a lot of people are wondering, why, why did you have to go down that road? A lot of people are wanting that road, including someone who's about to be in the Basketball Hall of Fame, and that would be our basketball analyst, Doris Burke. LeBron James does not suffer fools. He cares deeply about his legacy. And if he did not believe in Jeannie Buss and the Lakers ownership and the front office leadership of both Magic and Rob, I do not believe he would put that legacy in jeopardy just to satisfy some lifestyle urge. So very, very respectfully, I would disagree. I do not think LeBron, if he did not believe in long-term success as possible in L.A., he would have gone there. So that leads to really the two parts that we're talking Mm -hmm. about here, because no one is thinking the Lakers are going to con- contend for a title this year. Let's no. just be honest about that. No, we're exactly right. But the idea that a year from now, with the other free agents that may come there, Kawhi, mm-hmm. Kevin Durant, Clay, Clay Thompson, Thompson, among Jimmy Boogie, Butler, Boogie Cousins, Boogie, among all these guys, that makes sense. But you can't disassociate the idea of what coming to L.A. meant to LeBron as well. I, I think both of these things are accurate to a degree. Because what's the first couple of things that we've seen from LeBron 
LeBron now that he's in L.A. He put out that tweet about anybody know where a good pizza place is? Blaze Pizza. Like, which he owns. Which he of. owns. Mm-hmm. That serves his purposes. The other thing, what's the other thing we've heard about LeBron now that he's in L.A.? He's putting together a movie deal to star in another, make a, make a comedy and star right. in that movie, which right. he did with Amy Schumer. What was the name of that? Trainwreck. Trainwreck, He yeah. did a pretty good job. John Cena was hilarious. Very, very, very funny. Yeah. You you can't discredit that no. part of the Didn't equation. Did he just have lunch? Was it lunch or dinner with, with Leo and Al Pacino? And Al Pacino. Uh, and yeah. shoot out the back yeah. door. Now, so listen, that's part, you can't disregard no, you, that. You can't disregard that, but also I, I don't think he was going to give up any any kind of shot at a championship just for that. But he, he and, is kind of giving it up this year. Well, this year he is, yes. Yeah. But, but I think he believes that Magic will be able to do what Phil wasn't able to do in New York and attract other free agents there, and especially now that LeBron is there as well, and, and, and to get those free agents next year and build that team next year when the... Golden State Warriors may come down a notch next year if Clay t- if Clay Thompson leaves. Yeah. Boogie, I don't think is going to be there, but Boogie hasn't been part of this championship team that's going on right now in Golden State. Right. But if Clay leaves, Clay's been one integral part of that, so he may be gone. So that may just be the start of the chipping away, you know, at that if Clay is gone and the Lakers add some of these big time free agents. You have to continue to see where uh, Houston is. I still want to see if Houston's going to get Clint Capella back. Right. You know, the restricted free agent and what's going to happen with that. Situation. And they basically said to him, "Go get a number, we'll match it." Basically. Yeah. So, so LeBron has has done this twofold, just as a lot of people had predicted for the lifestyle out there of where he wants to go, with also an eye on, hey, I think this place is going to attract. Big time free agents next year for us to build a championship team. So here's the real question. If he had not gone to LA, where would he have gone? Right? I think he probably would have stayed in Cleveland. Yeah. I think that would have been the thing. Stay in Cleveland for another year, fight to get back into the finals again to probably lose again, and and then, you know, choose to leave next year. Uh, again, according to Philadelphia, he strongly considered Philadelphia. Just ask Philly. So yeah. so strongly that he didn't even meet with them in person. Now he the met ent- with a proxy. Now he met the, with a proxy. Now you sit there and you wonder, will Kawhi end up in Philly? Yeah, that would because right now that'll the, be a rental. We believe the, the, the East is Boston, but you put Kawhi yeah. on that team at least for this year. Boy, that makes it really even more intriguing. Or does Kawhi stay now in San Antonio now that Tony Parker's gone? You know what's going to happen with Ginobili? You know maybe uh, maybe Kawhi will. Uh, stay there and sign that max deal. Yeah, my, my only my only issue with that whole thing is if it wasn't going to be uh, in L.A. I mean, I I think he wanted to go there, and they just they just convinced him that we can make this work. Listen, and I that, don't think that to me is to why. Jerry West's point. I don't think I, I think it was one of those. He was tell going, me why I should go here. T- or yeah. tell me why I shouldn't. Exactly. I'm going to go here. Give me Correct. reasons why I shouldn't go there, and I'll shoot them down. Yeah. and yep. still end up there. Validate my yeah. feelings. Yeah. basically. So, Validate my instincts. From, here. from Jerry's point of, he thinks it was a pretty easy get. I I I, I don't think I really disagree with that. I'm, I'm with you yeah. now. Again, uh, you you have to dif- you have to sort of associate the other thing that you the idea that basketball wasn't a part of it. Basketball is a part of it. But if we're being honest with it, basketball wasn't a big part of it for this year. It's right. for going forward. The long-term thing is there. But again, he wanted to go there. It was just, let's make sure, tell me I'm making the right decision. And Magic's like, you're making the right decision. <laughs> it's a normal day. You're rushing out the door to get to work on time when suddenly, there it is, the dreaded service light. So what is it this time? Tire pressure? Low coolant? Time for an oil change? <sighs> When it comes to service lights, head to Jiffy Lube. We've got you covered. Drive in today and make the switch to Pennzoil. Ask for Pennzoil Synthetics. Getting you back on the road in a Jiffy. Jiffy Lube. Leave worry behind. You up? You up. You mean like a booty call text? Ah, Is that what you're you're talking about here? Is that where you're going? I mean, I'm just... You up? Yes. Wow. I'm going to try that right now to my wife. Okay. I just sent it. We'll see what I get back. I may have to leave the show. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) I got a response. What'd she say? She just text back, idiot. (laughs) That means I'm staying here. Okay, that means she's not here for it. That's the next vernacular. Not here for it. Yeah, she's not here for it. So if you weren't here for it, would you (laughs) want to make it a point of texting back to say, yeah, I'm up, but uh uh-uh. Oh, uh-uh, you ain't getting his booty. You know what I'm talking about? Really? Uh, sports Center brought to you by Kingsford. All right, sports fans, sun's shining, temperatures are rising, summer's officially here. Grab your friends, blast some tunes, and light those coals because weather like this waits for no one. Kingsford charcoal. Start something. Yeah, that was. 
That was Jason Fitz started that about the whole you up thing. Well, Jason Fitz you is know. the devil. We Seems found that so. out. We found that out yesterday. Jason Fitz is the devil because he is ready for the robot revolution. He likes the AI thing, huh? The what robots. The hell, and, yeah. man. Yeah, I, I listen. Why I'm, plot? He's part of plotting his own demise. That's, that's what's going to happen. Which led us to believe, thanks to our fine researcher, Brett, who pointed out on the show Westworld, which mm-hmm. is all about robots. Yeah. You know what the robots are called on that show? What? Hosts. Yeah. Jason Fitz is a host. They're also taking over. Yeah. That's what they're doing. Stop. Yeah. Skynet is real. Quit enabling I'm with you. it. I'm with you. Uh, one could make the argument that Serena Williams is not human, and huh. she's a cyborg because of the way she's been able to do this stuff. She swept aside Julia Gerges in straight sets Thursday to book her place in the 2018 Wimbledon final. 23-time Grand Slam singles winner. Won the semifinal 6-2, 6-4 in just 70 minutes to reach her 10th Wimbledon singles final. She'll play Angelique Kerber. Uh, in the final Saturday after she got by Yelena Ostapenko and Serena about whether or not she thought she would be here. Literally didn't expect to do this well in my fourth tournament back in 16 months, you know. So I just feel like when I don't have anything to lose, I just can play so free, and that's kind of what I'm doing. It is. Look, 10 months after giving birth, 10 months, this is where she is, and she's back in the Wimbledon final for the 10th time. I don't. I don't know... Mike, if there's a way to describe to people in any way that they can understand how far and beyond the pale she is in terms of dominance in her sport as opposed to almost anything else you could put out there. Well, and and, and I think maybe the scary thing is, is, is she going to get better from where she is right now? I yeah. mean, not, not from her prime, but from where she is right now. Already, 10 months after giving birth, she's in the final at Wimbledon. So what does that mean when she you know starts feeling even better about her game and about being in the be- best shape that she can get into uh, right now. I mean, I think that's going to be scary for people. That to it would be the only thing stopping her is going to eventually be age or injury. Yeah, uh, or another well. pregnancy. That's exactly right. <laughs> or another pre- pregnancy. I brought it up earlier. If she were, if she were to, to you know, throw down a few more uh, Grand Slam titles here at this age and under the conditions she's uh, that she's in, would. She be the all one of the all time on the Mount Rushmore of all athletes. Forget men and women. I kind of think she's almost th- there. There are already. those. I would. That's a, that's the tweets I was getting. She's yeah. uh, they're saying she's already there. Yeah, she's already on the Mount Rushmore. And again, when you say Mount Rushmore, you're talking about top four. Right. Is what you're talking about. So she has been incredible. I still. The question then becomes how many how many tennis players would you put up there? Because Federer is so far and away above on the men's side. Uh. And how many how many tennis players can you have on the Mount Rushmore? See, is is Federer farther away from the next man than Serena is away from the next? No, woman? No, 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 no. I don't think so. Uh, but on, ah. on, on the on the ah, so you could go back in time. That's uh-huh. what that's always, so you could go back in time. I, I think the this. most, at least certainly in my time of watching, uh, the most dominant I've seen has been Serena through her dominance and Tiger through his dominance. Yep. Through his what decade or so of whatever it was of dominance uh, that it was, but uh, I, it is amazing what Serena has done, and again what she has the potential to continue to do. It, you know, it's funny because we were at Wimbledon last year when she wasn't there, and you got the feeling from talking to all the other women in the draw there was a pressure to win because they knew this was their chance because she wasn't there. Yeah, and that was the same way last year at the U.S. Open. Hey. We all got a chance now, and we better take advantage of this chance because when she comes back, we ain't having these chances well, anymore. And then it's like when she comes back, okay, how long do we have then? Exactly. Um, time's up. Yeah. I mean, really. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. So, I mean, congratulations to those women that won those slams because they knew they had a window and they had better take, take advantage of that opportunity because that opportunity, bam, shut close. Coming up. We have a few messy situations, wordplay, that we'll need to clean up. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Bryce Harper. Join me and the thousands tweeting and posting their appreciation for our military and veterans by using T-Mobile's hashtag Hats Off for Heroes. When you share your photo or video with hashtag Hats Off for Heroes, T-Mobile will donate $1 to support vets with Team Rubicon. So, America, keep posting with hashtag Hats Off for Heroes, and T-Mobile will keep giving. Major League Baseball trademarks used with permission. Official licensee of Major League Baseball Players Association. 
Great news. There's a quick way you can save money. Switch to GEICO. GEICO could help you get great coverage at a great price. And it only takes 15 minutes to see if you could save 15% or more on car insurance. Go to GEICO.com today and see how much you could save. Chaka Hislop is here, our ESPN uh, FC analyst, in studio giving us the Straight Talk, brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. Best phones, best networks, no contracts. Chaka, help me with the hurt. Help me with the heel. Help me with the healing. It was all there for the three Lions. They score in the first five yep. minutes. They're on their way. It's coming home. They were going to the final. England, France, battle for the channel. And then Croatia just said, nah, we're good. We're stronger, tougher, and more athletic than you are. And that's what happened from that point on. And, and the truth is, Croatia shouldn't have been. Yeah. Croatia came into this game on the back of playing, of going extra time in the two previous games against both Denmark and Russia. By the way, Russia were the lowest ranked hosts coming into this tournament. Yet they, they get the better of Spain. And they take Croatia a full 120 minutes. Now that being said, England get the lead against a team that you think would be tiring. And they don't know what to do with it. After 20 minutes, once Croatia and that midfield of, of Modric and Rakitic took the, took hold of this game by the scruff of the neck, the English simply didn't know what to do, how to get by them, how to get around them. They resorted to these 60-yard balls into Raheem Sterling. That's not his game. That's easy for Croatia to deal with. And in the end, the, the difference in class and their composure we, we, Took them, took them to the final. And, and England, with their lack of a plan B, lack of a creative midfielder, went out in a whimper that I don't think anybody expected. So from the side of Croatia, in this was their third straight game of extra time. Yeah. So put it in perspective to us in a sport where you run so much. Mm. Uh, and uh, the thought going in was, will they have tired legs? How will that go? And and, and coming through three uh, extra times and three wins of how impressive that is. Well, well no, in, in a World Cup, and, and the test in a World Cup is how many games you have and in how quick succession. Effectively, Croatia have now played an extra game in this tournament right. with, with, without, with, with less rest than everybody else. England rested players in their third group game against Belgium. Mm. Croatia did the same against Iceland, but it, with a, a, a small squad, as, as you would expect, and an extra game kind of squished in, in into this 10 or, or two-week period is a lot. At, at this level of any competition. And, and, and they did it. It went to extra time and they were the better of the two teams. They were the team that, that got the winning goal in, in extra time. England didn't offer an awful lot. And I, I, I find that hard to explain. Um, and if I were an English fan, I'd find it hard to accept. So. The, the the most interesting in this game, we'll get to the final and then what's going to happen with our World Cup mm. fantasy draw, which is the most important thing in a minute. For the first 25 minutes, England was dominant. Yes. It looked like they might be up 2 or 3 nil yes. at the at the first half. And then from that point on, something clicked in Croatia. And from the 25th minute on, all the way through the second extra time session where they scored, they were far and away the fresher, more athletic, mm-hmm. more energetic, more dominating team. What happened? I, I think what happened is... England expected Croatia to be a little bit tired. And maybe the Croatians thought, well, we could sit back, soak up a little bit of pressure, play our way into this game. England get a goal in the fifth minute. Dominate up until the 20th minute. Croatia realized we've got to do something different because we're just getting overrun here. Now, despite the tired legs, despite the tired minds, what they do is they then start to play higher up the field. They start to press England back. England's wingbacks can't get forward. England don't have enough creativity in midfield. And it's not what they were expecting. And from the sidelines, Gal Southgate, the English manager, who has done a fantastic job, it, it has to be said, ever since he, he, he came into the hot seat with the English national team, but didn't offer an awful lot to change it. The substitutions he made were like for like. A striker for a striker. Midfielder for a midfielder. Defender for a defender. Never giving Croatia anything to think about as the game ran away from them. Croatia just kept doing what they were doing, pressing them high up, playing that high energy game, realizing that no, England don't have a don't have a solution for it. And and they they just dominated the game and, and, and took it over. Shaka Hislop joining us, uh, ESPN SC analyst. He appeared in the two thousand six uh World Cup uh, for the goalie for Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, as far as France beating Belgium, did, did France just basically 
Have they set the the, the standard that they're the yeah. best team? Yes, in, they in have. This? And and I, I'll be honest. Once Belgium beat Brazil, who are my favorites in, in yeah. going into this tournament, I, I thought this was as good a Belgium team and performance as we'd seen. And I wasn't quite sure how France would would cope with this resurgent Belgium. But yet still, um, and and the Belgian, a couple of the Belgian players had some. I, I thought naughty things to say at the end of the game. Courtois, Eden Hazard. Let me just out. say the greatest quote of the show today is had some naughty things to say. <laughs> yeah, I just I want to be like clear. Let's yeah. be clear about that's, that. That's, that's spending Shaka! Too much, <laughs> too, much, too much time in England. <laughs> but they, they come out and say, well, France were, France were negative. They were defensive. I'd prefer to lose with this Belgian team than win with that French team. But the truth of the matter is the Belgian goalkeeper was, was by far the, the busier of the two. France had the, the dominant, the, all the chances. Now, for, for me, again, but with, with, with Belgium, I expected more against France. But France, uh, uh, France stifled all their creativity. Eden Hazard, who is one of the best players in, in, in world football, was nullified. Um, we'd seen very little of, of Romelu Lukaku, one of the top strikers in world football. And I thought that was brilliant tactically by the French. And then with the talent they have, Kylian Mbappe, who's emerged as, as, well, we've known about him for the last couple of years. 19 years old. 19 years old. We've known about him for the last couple of years when he he burst on the scene uh, with Monaco a couple of seasons ago, Paris Saint-Germain last year. But I think he has emerged as the premier talent in world football. Once you start looking outside of that Messi, Ronaldo sphere, I think Mbappe is now the kind of player to to go to. Um, But he he had a good game. Uh, Paul Pogba, who struggled with Manchester United, continues to grow during the course of this tournament. And this French team just keeps getting better and better. So is it theirs to lose? Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. But you come up against a Croatia team who nobody expected to be here. When you come up against an opponent who have nothing to lose, who are the underdogs, that's as as difficult a proposition as, as there is, or can be as difficult yeah. a proposition as there is in sport. And, and the, the other difficult thing that we're having a problem with, and and we had Casey Keller in here talking about it, the third place game. Oh. Does anybody ever want to play that no, game? No. Why do you even? Why do they even do it? No. It's, it's, that that's well, the reasons are obvious. Money. Yeah. Um, Wait, you you're know, saying FIFA's into money? Uh, I have never heard you, that. You before. heard it here first. <laughs> 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 Breaking news. <laughs> But you know, it's 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 just one of those things that I guess you, you they have to do at at this point. Nobody truly enjoys it. it it'll give an opportunity to. I mean, the the one upside to this is all these countries bring twenty three men squads and fifteen maybe get games. So the others who have been here, have travelled, have spent the last six weeks with the national teams and and not played any any, any minutes, get an opportunity to. to Pull on the shirt and, and, and make their own memory in this tournament. But that's as, as, as good a silver lining as I can give this. Game. It's yeah. about the same people that'll play in this match when they played the first time, right? That, that's because right. Nobody, <laughs> they, they nobody all threw it. There were like 17 changes in that game between the two teams and it'll yeah. probably be the same here. All right. So for our draft here, I am winning by five points. I see that. The title game is a seven point game. So we put two points on the third and fourth place game. Right. So basically how it can end up, if Belgium wins, that's one of my teams, yeah. I'm going to be up seven. And mm-hmm. then Croatia has to win, uh, that's my son and Devin's team, to give them seven points. We would tie. If yeah. that happens, we want to go to what's been the most exciting thing in this World Cup is the PKs. Been, been fantastic. So it will be me against the two of them against PKs. I'm 55, my son's 28, Devin is 27. Mm-hmm. I'm going to embarrass them. So I'm looking for <laughs> tips from you. It's one thing to be a goalie for PKs against professionals. If I'm playing goalie against a couple of scrub 27 and 28-year-olds who may hurt themselves more <laughs> than actually make the ball in goal, how should I play it? I don't dive and hope, right? I should just wait for them to kick because they're going to have no aim, correct? Yeah, if, if, if it's you against them, Mike, wait for them to kick because I think you've got them here. <laughs> See, Psychologically, you, you've got them there. You've got them right where you want them. So you wait for them to make the mistake, and that's when, that's when you make the, the most of the, of your chances. How about when I'm kicking? What's the best advice for someone? I have zero, zero expertise in this at all. I really don't want to hurt myself either. Right. But what's the best thing for me and to do? I've, I've, I've seen you kick a soccer ball out in, out 
And on, oh, on, that's on right. Campus. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. It, I kicked it at you, and it didn't you, go you, very well. You hitting yourself is a genuine you, concern. Yes, I, I forgot I did yes. kick it at you, and it didn't really do anything. Pick a side. Don't change your mind and just go for it, regardless of what the goalkeeper does. Okay. Regardless of of what Trey is shouting from the sidelines. Okay. <laughs> you pick your spot, and you go for that and only that. Is there any chance that I should try a top shelf shot or is that no. asking too much once again mike I've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> see see shaka i have i have a better idea <laughs> they want to go against each other i think they should both try and kick against you we did that I, i'm i'm yeah. up, i'm up for it i have right? no problem we we trey yeah. we, we did do that already yeah. i can't, and it was a joke yes <laughs> i mean it's, i want to see the joke no, it'd, be, it'd be much better kicking I want to against see, come on stanzik we got to get no. this oh, going we right? could put trey in goal trey ain't going in goal done i'll do it I've seen no. you kick. Who it's, finished I've seen the you table? kick. Trey, uh, no, the staff uh, finished last. No, Trey is not. We're, no, it's Trey's going to be me ahead. against Devin. I was all in on the Lions, yeah, and they let you me were. down. Yeah, that that would have been it for they him. They let yeah, me down. Yeah. All right, so that's the key thing. Pick a spot and just boot Absolutely, it. Should yeah. I try and kick it as hard as I can? Why not? Um, why not? I can think of a whole <laughs> real lot of reasons of why not. <laughs> Holy smokes. I, I Direction first. Okay. Yeah, yeah, once you get the direct, but it's got to be... Hard enough with enough pace. Got to be a little high. Yeah, that even if they get in front of it, they may miss it right. or it may hit him in the face. That's right. It's got to be a heavy shot. I'm, that's right. Like Griezmann's shot the other day was a heavy that, shot. That was. Listen, that yeah. was. I'm not going to lie. If they block it, I hope they block it with their face and I break their nose. Okay. <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll I'm wear not helmets. Sure to that we'll part. wear helmets. <laughs> Shaka, you yeah, are the man. best. Support for the Golik and Wingo Show podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Let's talk about buying homes for a minute. Because of rising interest rates, there's a lot of unpredictability when it comes to buying a home these days. It's causing a whole lot of anxiety with folks. Well, our friends at Quicken Loans are doing something about it. They're calling it the power buying process, and here's how it works. Quicken Loans will verify your income, assets, and credit in less than 24 hours to give you a verified approval. This gives you the strength of a cash buy. Then once you're verified, you qualify for their all new exclusive rate shield approval. First, they lock your rate for up to 90 days while you shop. Now here's the best part. If rates go up, your rate stays the same. But if rates go down, your rate also drops. You win either way. It's the kind of thinking you'd expect from America's largest mortgage lender. To get started, go to rocketmortgage.com slash Golic. Rate shield approval only valid on certain 30-year purchase transactions. Additional conditions or exclusions may apply. Based on Quicken Loans data in comparison to public data record, equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states, NMLS, consumeraccess.org, number 3030. Hi, I'm Bryce Harper. Join me and the thousands tweeting and posting their appreciation for our military and veterans by using T-Mobile's hashtag Hats Off for Heroes. When you share your photo or video with hashtag Hats Off for Heroes, T-Mobile will donate $1 to support vets with Team Rubicon. So America, keep posting with hashtag Hats Off for Heroes and T-Mobile will keep giving. Major League Baseball trademarks used with permission. Official licensee of Major League Baseball Players Association. Golik and Wingo with you on ESPN Radio and ESPN News, presented by Progressive Insurance. All phone guests join us on the Shell Penzoil Performance Line, and nobody does straight talk better than Teddy Atlas, our boxing analyst, in studio I now. I thought that was the reason why you named it Straight Talk. That, that yeah, was, it, for it, you. Straight Talk Teddy <laughs> exactly is right. your nickname. Uh, bringing us uh, Straight Talk by Straight Talk Wireless. Best phones, best networks, no contracts. All right, Teddy. Manny Pacquiao is going to be 40 later on this year. He goes into this weekend's fight against Matisse. What are we expecting, and how much more can we expect out of Pacquiao? I think this is his 69th professional fight. Hope he doesn't get hurt. Really? Yeah, I mean, straight talk, right? I yeah, mean, absolutely. You know, Ali and Frazier. Here, here's the two sides to that coin. Uh, when guys get to this age in boxing, you know, they don't just get embarrassed. They get hurt. And when their skills get diminished, and make no doubt about it. I mean, there was no doubt that... Pacquiao's skills are diminished. Right. And by the way, the guy he's fighting, Matisse, his skills are diminished too. But he's 35, the other guy's 39, as you said, he's going to be 40, Pacquiao. And when that happens, there's two things that happen. One is, unlike when that happens in other sports, like baseball, I remember the great Willie Mays, and I got to see him play in a Met uniform, which a lot of people would say, we wish we never saw him playing. I'm with uniform, you there. You know, and I remember seeing him with his the great Willie Mays with his basket catch. He couldn't catch the ball, and that was terrible to watch. But guess what? There was nobody smashing a hundred mile an hour fastball against his head. But 
you have punches now that are going to be smashing against the head of Pacquiao that used to be avoided. And so when you get to this place, just like Ali and Frazier, you leave more in the ring. Anytime you get in the ring, you're leaving something there. But now you're leaving bigger parts of yourself there, and that's dangerous. And here's the flip side to that coin. It could be a good fight because when the skills are diminished and you can't avoid punches anymore and you're slower and your reflexes aren't there, you get hit more. The only problem is it becomes a little bit like rock'em, sock'em robots, except instead of plastic, this is flesh and blood pummeling each other. And I I get concerned about that. I could I would wish that you could stop guys at a certain point. He is at point now, Pacquiao, where I'm not saying that it's going to be a loss for him. He might win the fight. He should win the fight. He's got more class than the other guy, Matisse. But... He's diminished. He's been damaged already. How much further do we go down that road? Now, is it, a, is it very difficult, the road that I'm touching on, to stop and tell somebody they can't make a living anymore? Yeah, you're getting into tough territory there. But there has to be, whether it's the commissions or whatever, somebody, some grown-up in the room that says, hey, you know what? There it's comes time. a point in boxing, again, not baseball. You're not missing a fly ball. You're not striking out at the plate and, and falling down as you strike out. You're getting hit in the head, and that concerns me. Concerns me for the sport and obviously for the fighters. So if somehow you were running the show, would, would, would you put an age limit on it? Would you put more stringent tests as you get older, whether to give a boxing license? What would you do? What, what can you get away with? Can I get away? Can you get away with, again, all looking out for the fighter, looking out for the sport. Can you get away with an age limit? I'll tell you one thing that, because some people grow older better. Some people perform better. George Foreman is a pretty the, good example of that. That's the one guy I thought and, of that, that sort of yeah, came back and, and he's didn't And he's the fly in the ointment with, with the argument. He's like, well, what about George Foreman? Well, that's genetics. Not everybody is George Foreman. But I would say that you've got to pass tests. All states are different. Some states don't demand the same test. Demand the CAT scan, an MRI. But here's here's the thing where I would vary, where I would go in a different direction. Instead of looking at the test now and saying, uh, yeah, it's, it's passable, I want to look at a test from five years ago and compare it and see if there is if there is damage from that time, if the test has has diminished, if 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 there's been if there's been erosion there, so to speak, I know I'm not speaking in proper medical no, no, terms. No, I know what you mean, but, though. Yeah, but yeah. compare the test from five years ago and see if there's a change. Yeah, Bernard Hopkins is another one that comes to mind. Yeah, of winning course. Titles in, in 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 his late forties. And listen, guys, styles come into play here too. So you have a guy who's really exciting. Exactly. What does that mean? It means he takes more risk. What's that mean? It means he may take some more punches. So you got a guy who's been real exciting, like Pacquiao. Right. And you say, hey, bravo, bravo. We love that guy. Let's keep seeing him, even when he's 39 years old. But those are the guys that get more damage. Those are the guys that get, you know, more miles on the odometer, that get shop worn. Those are the guys like you just mentioned, Hopkins. He was a careful guy. He was a boxer. He wasn't a guy that you ran to see every time he fought. You did later on because it was interesting. But at the beginning, the fights weren't scintillating fights. Pacquiao's fights were always exciting. But a guy like Hopkins, no, he was a guy who measured you. He was a guy who outboxed you, outthought you. You know, he, he'd make it a stinker if he had to, but he would find a way to win. That's why he was preserved better than some of the guys that I'm alluding to. Right. All right, so we, we know about Pacquiao. We've seen him fight, we, we, and you've told us a lot about him, and we've seen him a lot. Lucas Matisse, we, we don't know a lot about. He's a guy who's 35, as you mentioned, 39 and 4. Of those 39 wins, 36 came by knockout. So what kind of a boxer is he? What can we expect out of punches him? Are punches, I say it on your show, I say it on ESPN. Over the last 22 years I've been doing this crap, is that... <laughs> Is we, that, we love the way you do this. Yeah, crap. we do. Well, thank you. There's a science of doing crap well. Yep. And when you punches are born, they're not made. He was born to be a puncher. Matisse is a guy that's got TNT in his hands. But when you get older, he's diminished too. No doubt about it. I think you have two diminished fighters here. When you get older, 
Do the bullets still go? Is there still a gun? Do the bullets still go in the chamber? Yeah, they do. But the firing pin is chipped, and they don't come out straight. They don't come out as quickly. They don't come out as easily. And that's the thing. So that you, you got the power against a guy who has always made exciting fights. That means he takes risks. That means you're going to get a chance, even with a chip firing pen, uh, uh, pin. You're going to get a guy shooting shots at a guy who's going to be trying to dodge those bullets. The thing is, he doesn't dodge them as well anymore. You know, he, he's not Neo in the Matrix where, you know, whoa, <laughs> yeah. whoa, 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 and, and everything's going past them. <laughs> now some of them are hitting them. And that's, that's what the interesting part of this fight, and I'd say it again. The thrill in Manila. You know what? Part of me wants to cry when I talk about that fight because that is one of the greatest, most brutal, epic fights in the history of a sport that I love. For people that don't know, George Foreman against Muhammad Ali when Muhammad Ali beat Foreman when he was supposedly unbeatable and used his rope-a-dope technique yeah, in that fight. Yeah, but then I'm talking about the thrill in Manila, the the fight between Frazier and Ali, yes. their third fight. That fight was a classic, too. And that fight was one of the most brutal heavyweight fights of all time. And some people point that as maybe the greatest fighter in Ali's career. Because he said to Sports Illustrated after the fight, when you can be honest, he said, you know, in the 10th round, that was the closest I ever came to death. I thought about quitting. And people hear that, he said, Muhammad Ali, don't. yeah, for all you young people out there, yeah, even the great ones think about quitting. So, but they don't. Right. They don't. They find a way not to. And Frazier, his, his trainer... Eddie Fudge had to stop that fight in the 14th round. He came back. He was starting to take control of the fight. But the point that I'm making is it was a brutal fight. It was an epic fight. But they left chunks of themselves. And maybe that fight could be pointed at when you look at an alley that makes you cry later on in life. That couldn't talk. Yeah, and that was my mistake. Sorry, the rumble in the jungle. No, that's fine. Thrill in Manila there. the, The thing is that the reason why that fight is an epic, a classic fight, is because they took so much. They wouldn't have taken so much if they weren't diminished, if they weren't eroded in those skill levels that that was so high at one point in their careers. They stood there. They were rock'em, sock'em robots. They stood there and pummeled each other. And we applauded it, and we said, oh, my God, the guts, the character. Oh, but at the end of the day, oh, my God, the damage. So, so with that in mind, Teddy, as Teddy Atlas joins us in studio, um, how, why is it so hard? It seems like m- almost more than any other sport. It's and I'm hard. sorry to be the one. No, no, no. Who, no. no. This is great, Teddy. Uh, but, Do not be sorry. But, straight talk, you know, brother. This is straight it's, talk. It's the elephant in the room. Yeah. You know what I'm so, saying? So with that in mind, why is it, it seems like boxers, maybe more than any other sport, have a hard time walking away. We've seen so many come back and outside of Foreman. What a it, great question. It really goes poorly. What Why, a great question. What is it about boxing that makes it so difficult for they them to say I'm done? They don't get their dues the way baseball players do, basketball players, and football players do. Yeah. They're, they're not on these shows as much. Yeah. They're not. They're not highlighted. The great ones are, but over, overall, think about it. Overall, their, their platform what they do, the medium of what they do is is not highlighted to the level that it is in baseball, basketball, and football, where you're seeing them every day. Right. You're seeing them every week. You're not. So they they never got enough of it. And so they crave for it. And they crave for it later when it's too late. So who wins this fight? I'm going with class, you know, and, and not demeaning anybody, but there was a great <laughs> there was a great promoter, one of the greatest ones, Mickey Duff. And when it was a situation like that, I remember he got right to it. He said, Teddy it's a donkey and a racehorse. I'm going with the racehorse. Even though the racehorse is old, even though the racehorse is ready to be put out to pasture, it's still a racehorse. And I'm going with Pacquiao. It's a normal day. You're rushing out the door to get to work on time when suddenly, there it is, the dreaded service light. So what is it this time? Tire pressure? Low coolant? Time for an oil change? (sighs) When it comes to service lights, head to Jiffy Lube. We've got you covered. Drive in today and make the switch to Pennzoil. Ask for Pennzoil Synthetics. Getting you back on the road in a jiffy. Jiffy Lube. Leave worry behind. 
the voice of Monday Night Football. So excited to talk to Booger McFarlane. Delighted to be joined now by Joe Tessitore. Whoa, whoa. I was promised Booger McFarlane. What is, what's going what, on? What do you mean you were promised? I mean, the, the voice of Monday Night, Night Football. Football. That would be Joe Tessitore. I'm going to sit this one. Joe, I will not stand for this <laughs> slander. Sorry to disappoint Jake. Oh! I always go with the more handsome bullet. From the wow. top rope! <laughs> Joe Tess with the first round knockout. It's a standing eight count, and Golick Jr. is down. That was awesome, by the way. That did not go well for Junior. Sports Center, which is why it was awesome. <laughs> it's Sports Center, brought to you by Dell. There's nothing small about your small business. That's why this is Dell's biggest Black Friday in July sale ever. Get up to 40% off and shop deals on PCs with Intel Core processors. Plus, get free shipping on everything. Just visit dell.com slash business deals or call 877 by dell all right we continue on golich and wingo glad mm-hmm. you're with us and uh we are out there and here it's it's summer take bracket day mm-hmm. okay so here are the two questions uh as we continue to go through these topics summer take bracket not much time left uh summer take yanni it says yanni or it says laurel uh the votes right now Heavily in favor of Laurel, 58%, 42 say Yanni. Mm-hmm. So we got 13 minutes left in this poll. So right. if you're Team Yanni, you have some work to do. And then the other poll, which there's 13, 12 minutes left now, is a Belichick the best co- current coach? Is Popovich the best current coach? Belichick ran away with this one, 69% to 31% for Pop. Yeah. Uh, so you have a few minutes left in that, but I don't think it's going to be enough uh, to change that, that outcome. That would be a hard pass. That would on be that a tough one. one. Yeah, tough one there. Uh, again, I think we messed up by just saying it current. We should have been of all time would make the take even a little scorchier, don't you oh, think? We can't go back in time. We can't. Well, we know that. Yes. As you know that. Uh-huh. So are you saying we can go we, back in we time? We can't go we back can't in time. Go. Really? Ah. That's your question to me? We can't. Can we... No, we can't. Hit the drop one more time. Uh, ah. <laughs> I love the ah. ah. The ah was the best part that. about that. Um, you do not want to go back in time for this next segment, which is Streak for the Snacks, because you're on a winning streak, my friend. Again, the rules, you pick a game and risk a better snack option or take the snack on the table. So last week, you correctly picked Belgium to beat Brazil in the quarters, so you're now on to Tier 2 snacks. Again, Tier 1 snack is just something found around the office. Uh, tier 2 snack or Game 2 is a bite-sized candy bar. Game uh, three game winning streak is a full size candy bar. Four games, which you'll never get to, as a box of donuts, and five games as a cake, which really is a pipe dream. But you got a chance for uh, something a little better, which is four starbursts right now. Ah, okay, okay. So what what are we picking? Ah. We're picking the uh, the game again: Belgium versus England. Uh-huh. We're doing that again. Aha! So it's Belgium against England, second time around in a game that doesn't matter. Second time around, third and fourth place game. Now the last time uh, this game was between two teams that didn't want to win, Belgium won the game. Right. And no one even cares about playing the game this time. So uh, this is a hard one to pick. So are you gonna you gonna rest on your laurels and take all these starbursts? No, no, no. You I'm gonna. I, I do enjoy a starburst. I do. You got four enjoy, of them. Got here. four of them. Four of them here. All kinds I of enjoy. Flavors, big boy. But if I get this right, I'm up to a full size candy bar. I have mm-hmm. not been there yet. This would be new territory for me again in if, this in this category. In this category, if yeah. I got it right, I get a full size. If, I, if and if I chose to get the next one right, I'd get a box of donuts. And if I were to go five in a row, never happen. I would get a cake. You might as well just say we'll get your car. That's no, I happen. think. Listen, I think England. While while both these teams are disappointed, they're not in the finals. Mm-hmm. Belgium lost to a better team. They were down in the game. They were never up. England was winning their game. Win- and even though it was early on, they were winning their game. And then they gave it up Croatia to tie it up in regulation the and then lose still it. Real. Tread, tread so the they want to be real. home. They want to sing their song and go home. They already want to be home. Belgium's winning this game. So I am taking that. I am, I'm not taking the starburst. Okay. You can have them. You're assuring I'm the going starburst. for the full size candy bar. I'm taking Belgium for another reason. If yeah. Belgium wins, I get two more points in our fantasy, uh, uh, draft. And that would lock down your the time. No, no, no. No, it wouldn't. It wouldn't put no, me. No, if you win at the other one. It if the other, but, down. but it would put me up seven. If Belgium wins, I get two points. It would put me up seven. The finals game is worth seven points. So obviously, if France win, I win the whole thing. If Croatia wins, Mike and Devin's team ties me, and we go to penalty kicks. And I mean penalty kicks of Mike and Devin against me. I am looking for. I will take that risk. So I will. If Bel, let's put it this way: If Belgium wins tomorrow, yeah. I I don't lose. Correct. The most I can do is tie and lose it in PKs, but I at least get to go to PKs. And I, I there's part of me that almost looks forward 
to tying and going to PKs so as a 55-year-old man, I can beat two guys who combine their age as 55 years old, Devin. What's your bad shoulder? Which which uh, side's your bad shoulder? I have two really good shoulders. Oh, okay. Ah. Which, which is the one? Ah, which is the one that the dog pulled out when you hurt? I him? have no idea what you're talking about. When the pug made you trip no and you hurt your shoulder? No clue what you're even talking about. Uh, we'll we'll go back in time and get that clip from the show more than anything ah. else. No, ah. no, 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 no. So we'll see what happens mm-hmm. there. And of course, make sure you're with us Monday. Uh, we'll be in Washington D.C. for the Major League All Star Game festivities at the District Winery on Water Street. The doors will open at five. It will make sure the spigots on the vats of wine are also open at five. I have no idea if that's legally correct. Yeah. But we'll do it anyway. Hey, I have a question for you. Kiki, you play golf this weekend? Nope. Me. Thanks a lot, buddy. Appreciate it. Mm. Hi, I'm Bryce Harper. Join me and the thousands tweeting and posting their appreciation for our military and veterans by using T-Mobile's hashtag Hats Off for Heroes. When you share your photo or video with hashtag Hats Off for Heroes, T-Mobile will donate one dollar to support vets with Team Rubicon. So, America, keep posting with hashtag Hats Off for Heroes, and T-Mobile will keep giving. Major League Baseball trademarks used with permission. Official licensee of Major League Baseball Players Association.